Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. And it, it actually is evening. Who who would have thought? There has been some bookish news, and that is Titi Dangaremga has been convicted. I knew that Titi Dangaremga caused a little bit of a stir during the time that she was shortlisted for the final in the Nervous Conditions trilogy, This Mournable Body. But apparently today it's come to a head. She's been convicted. And Faber released a statement on her behalf. Dear friends in Zimbabwe and everywhere in the world, dearest family and relatives, it is with heavy hearts that we bring you news of our conviction for the charge of attending a meeting with intent to incite public violence, breach of the peace and acts of bigotry as a result of exercising our constitutional rights as Zimbabwean citizens to freedom of expression and to demonstrate or protest or petition the government peacefully, which we did on the 31st of July 2020 by walking down Borrowdale Road displaying posters. If you're wondering what the posters said, it was this. I remember seeing this around the time. Uh, uh, but apparently this is a big deal in Zimbabwe. Dangaremga's poster says, we want better, reform our institutions. And the person by the side for her, Julie Barnes, which I'm not going to lie, when I read the article and I saw Julie Barnes, I read it as Julian Barnes and got very confused for all of three seconds. Julie Barnes it says, free our journalists, we want a better Zimbabwe for all. And that was it. Like, they walked down a street and they've been convicted for this. The first poster called for a better life for Zimbabweans and institutional reform in our country. The second poster called for the release of those who had exposed corruption in government in the media and others who had encouraged citizens to protest who had been imprisoned without bail and without trial. Titi Dangaremga carried these two posters. The third poster, Julie's, also requested freedom for journalists who had been arrested and imprisoned without bail or trial and also called for a better Zimbabwe for all. They're not asking for anything unfathomable, let's be honest. It just shows the corruption that's going on in Zimbabwe. Our hearts are heavy at this outcome because this conviction could set the precedent that a Zimbabwean, indeed a person in Zimbabwe, is not free to walk down a road with another citizen displaying peaceful messages that convey their opinions on issues that affect them as people living in this country. And indeed, it will set a precedent. Dangaremga is one of Zimbabwe's like most influential authors. Actually, because of the Booker Prize, they might be the most recognised Zimbabwean author. And you know my feelings that authors should be able to say and express themselves in any way, shape or form. I am completely in the camp of free expression and free speech when it comes to art. All form of artistry deserves to be expressed. I don't think we should be stifling artists at all. We must no longer joke that there is freedom of expression in Zimbabwe, but no freedom after expression. Absolutely. I think people forget about that. That's a great sentiment. We must take this conviction as a warning sign that our freedom peacefully to express what we want as Zimbabweans in public discourse is being stripped away from us. We are being intimidated into silence and in action as repression and corruption increase and the quality of our lives our hopes for our children's lives and our children's confidence in their future decreases. Freedom, justice and a dignified life are our right as Zimbabwean inhabitants of our planet. We urge you to stand peacefully for freedom, justice and dignity in our country at all times. We promise you that we will always do the same. And they, they sign off and that is the end of the statement. I have read up that Dangarabba has also been fined, but because of the corruption of the Zimbabwean currency, it equates to about 180 American dollars, like 200 pounds, but they're looking to appeal that just for those signs. That's wild. That's baffling to me that that's all they got convicted for was some posters walking down the street. It's just two of them. It's not even like a big gaggle of people. There was no like disruption. There were no riots. It's just two people walking down a street. That is a corrupt government. And you know, I'll, I'll thank my lucky stars that we're nowhere near this in Britain. We're nowhere near this in Britain. But let me know what you think about this, that Zimbabwe's most famous author has been convicted.